So today we are going to discuss with you fast medical aid for fractures of extremities. You should know what to do at the place of accident to provide so-called pre-hospital management of fractures. So actually, what should you do with the patient? If there is a fracture, you should immobilize it to prevent movement of bone fragments. As well, you should give him analgetics. Next thing, you should check the injured place. And if there is a bleeding, you should uh, stop the bleeding and cover the wound with a sterile bandage. You also should put the limb in elevated position and apply some ice on this area to prevent development of swelling. And as soon as possible, you should take the patient to an orthopedic doctor or to the nearest hospital. So how to perform immobilization on the fracture site? You should use splints. And these splints can be factory made and can be handmade. So made from materials that are surrounding you. So factory made splints are made from hard materials as metal or wood. And one of the most popular splints is so-called Kramer wire splint. It is made of wires and it is easily can be bended to create the shape according to the patient's extremity. You may use as a reference other side which is has no fracture and make a splint of the same shape and size. There are different types of splints according to their size. These can be used to immobilize different types of fractures. For upper extremity, fixation can also be performed with a sling. You just hang in this limb on a sling and also you can use a saw bandage. So you can use three medical bandages to bend the injured limb to the, to the trunk. If we are talking about immobilization of lower extremity, femoral fractures are immobilized usually by so-called traction splints. This may be a dietric splint, which is made of wood, and soma splint. So what are the main components of dietric splint? It consists of inner part, which is applied on the medial surface of the leg to the growing area. The length of it can be adjustable. And outer part, which can be applied to the axillary region. We can also have a wooden part for foot and a rope or bandage that you can fix firmly to the foot and the stick. So by twisting the stick, you can apply some traction along the axis of the extremity. And by means of these, the fixation will be much better. So traction splints have significant advantages. We can also use a thermal splint, which is more comfortable and it is quite light and also apply traction along the axis of the extremity. And the splint should be fixed with the bandages around the leg. And this part is going under the buttocks area. You also can apply some traction along the axis. We can use also Kramer wire splints to immobilize the femur, but you should use 
a set of three or four long splints. One splint is applied on the posterior part and both splints are applied on the inner part and lateral part. So you should combine two splints to make it longer, but it's not very useful. We also use Kramer wire splints for fixation of tibia and foot fractures. You can also apply it in a so-called physiological position. So you're flexing the knee joint to relax the muscles and you apply two splints on both sides. So if you don't have this factory made splints, you can use any board, stick, umbrella, any hard material to bend it. But you should not move your patients from this accent from the accident site place from the place of accident without immobilization. Here we should talk about the main rules that uh, you should remember. First of all, if you have arrived to the place of accident, you shouldn't move your patient with the fractured limbs without immobilization. When you choose the splint, the splint should be long enough and you should change the shape of the splint if possible according to the shape of the patient's extremity. Also, you should apply some soft padding under the splint to prevent damage of the skin. Remember that for fractures, uh, usually edema is increasing very quickly. And if you use a wire splint, this wire splint can cause a skin source. That is why you should cover it with a gauze or soft dressing and never apply it on a bare skin. Another important rule is that you should immobilize in all cases two nearest joints. So if we're talking about upper extremity, a forearm fracture, a wrist joint and elbow joint should, should be immobilized. If we're talking about humerus, shoulder joint, and elbow joint should be immobilized. That means that the splint should be long enough and goes to the posterior part and to the scapula on the opposite side. Also, it is recommended for humeral fractures to fix the wrist joint as well. If we are talking about fractures of femur, you should immobilize hip joint, knee joint, and ankle joint. And if we are talking about fractures of tibia, knee joint and ankle joint should be immobilized. We should remember also about some mistakes that we shouldn't do, we should avoid them. So common mistake is to move your patient without splint. Another thing, you should not apply very short splint, which is not fixing the nearest joints, as fixation will be poor and many complications may occur. So among these complications are displacement of bone fragments and the fracture can become open. These bone fragments can also compress nerves and blood vessels. And also such complications as shock development and fat embolism is very common when splints were not applied. You should not remove the clauses before splint is applied as it will cause additional injury and pain to your patient. So thank you very much for your attention.